Hello everybody, this is ManOS and welcome back to the Eternal Z review for Dark Frontier with part 3 of the Shadow Cards. Before we dive into the cards, you know the drill. Hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification icon if you're new to the channel to not miss out on more content. And now let's go. Alright, so first we have Bandit's Flail, clearly a limited only card and even in limited I think the card is quite weak. Um, yeah, only having three attack is quite a liability for a four cost weapon, especially one that basically splinters on most things that it hits. So even in limited, this seems pretty meh to me. If you have a lot of like armor gain and have can have more armor when you play this, it gets a bit better, but it's all in all pretty bad and there are better options most of the time. Next we have Dizzo's Racket. When you gain armor, draw that many cards and take twice that much damage, so effectively you turn armor into uh, one armor into take one damage uh, draw a card because you take double the damage so uh, to make up for the armor they could have also just said like every time you gain armor instead draw that many cards and take that much damage but instead they just decided to go for like twice the damage which has upsides like if you're immune to damage that means you gain the armor and draw the cards which with the replacement effect uh, ruling you wouldn't get for example so like with auric rune hammer you always draw a card and take zero damage and your rune hammer doesn't die um, so that's kind of a neat interaction there but yeah all in all i don't think the card is great it's pretty slow like four is a lot it requires you to warp your deck around it and then it is problematic like it means you can't play armor when you need to uh, with this out but don't want to take the damage and stuff like that so in constructed this card seems very iffy in limited uh, it might be a bit better but even there it's harder to like get enough armor going and the same issues can potentially apply although the lower power level of the opponent probably makes this more impactful next we have heartstopper so four cost three four flyer for four and the first time the enemy player discards a card each turn you draw it so that's kind of neat, but yeah, the stats are kind of small for a 4 drop. The ability is pretty situational and not that strong. So all in all, in Constructed, I don't see much of a future for this. In Limited, I mean, a 4, a four power 3, 4 flyer alone is great in Limited, so a pick away. Next we have Malediction, basically a bad Hailstorm. Um, the difference between 3 damage and minus 3, minus 3 is very marginal. Uh, in this game so in the end this basically just is like a four cost hailstorm in a different uh, faction which makes it a lot worse it's still like an okay option in a market where because if you would put hailstorm in a market you can still only use it on turn four sure this is still clunkier and doesn't let you for example play a depleted power and use it on turn four but other than that it serves the same purpose in a market if you don't have access to primal and want this type of effect this is an okay option. In limited, I don't see much reason to play this, honestly. Sure, you can try and set it up, but I'd probably rather have a more flexible card in my deck. <laughs> Next, we have Nullblade, the shadow version of Jawbone Greatsword, basically. The extra armor is a nice uh, addition and helps it beat some things that Jawbone can't without breaking, like, for example, some of the smugglers and merchants. So that's a nice plus here. Um, it also happens to hose um, opposing markets, including weapons. So if they have like relic weapon recur recursion and stuff, this is also affected. The summon also breaks face aegis, which is a nice bonus. It costs triple shadow, so that's quite a cost. But especially in something like Stone Scar, uh, you have a lot of duels now, so it's not that big of a deal. And um, yeah, so. In Constructed, this seems like a nice tool to have, and in Limited, this seems pretty powerful. Next, we have Razor Quill. As I mentioned before, there's a combo with this and Katra and Stained Honor. Uh, other than that, this is not interesting in Constructed. But in Constructed, even without Honor, uh, this is already pretty strong with Katra. And then if you get the Honor going, you can just win on the spot. So there might be something there in Constructed, but so far nobody figured it out yet. And maybe there's nothing, not sure. Maybe it's just too bad. And in limited, I mean, it's not great, but if you have a couple of synergies, it is like a four cost 2-4 that 
four one power turns into a three three and drains for one. It's nothing great, but it seems like an okay filler at least. Next we have Umbran Voidbringer, a four cost two two flying berserk. Not a constructed card, but in limited, honestly. This is all already pretty good. And then if you add in the onslaught drawing unit from your void, this is like the best brave robber ever to uh, use magic terms here. So yeah, if in limited this is a monster like a like an uncommon bomb, I would say card is amazing. Next we have Withering Touch. Uh, you swap the health of an enemy unit with the health of one of your units. It's a fast spell, it's very expensive, it's very conditional. Also clearly not constructed playable, but even in limited, not a big fan. I think I'd rather leave this in my sideboard in, in draft. Next we have Eviscerate. A nice limited removal, basically a bit expensive, but um, unconditional uh, hard removal is always nice and while well, 5 isn't cheap, it's still serviceable in limited, not a constructed playable, obviously. Next we have Fallen Militiamen. When another unit dies, it gets plus 1, plus 1. It's pretty expensive though, but you can shift it to help it grow. But all in all, I feel like the shift cost is kind of what it should cost normally. And then just not have shift, for example, but Basically, either having to shift it for a reasonable cost or use it right away for a horrendous cost makes this pretty mediocre and limited at best, I would say. So, um, yeah, and in Constructed, it's not even in the discussion. Next, we have Scarecrow. The 5 cost 2 6, nothing special. Not a Constructed card, but in Limited, it's pretty solid, like the body holds off the ground well, and at the start of your turn, you get to switch the attack and health of a unit of your choice so you can kind of like cripple opposing units make your own units better where this applies um, and yeah if you don't want to do anything meaningful you can just use it on a unit that has equal attack and health to not have any effect in the end and last but not least for part three we have stone scar outfitter so five cost two three and your other units get plus one attack which is a neat bonus the cards kind of small and fragile for the cost. You can shift it a turn earlier to get sort of a pseudo obelisk type thing going there or rather like bandit camp. Um, all in all in limited this seems at least okay. It's probably not great but solid and yeah not a constructed card obviously. All right that's it for part three of the shadow cards. I'll be back with part four and the top five um, later and yeah hope you guys uh, enjoy the series. If you do, hit the like button, share it with your friends, leave a comment, and of course, subscribe for more. And please consider whitelisting eternaltitans.com and YouTube on your ad blog and check out the ads at the beginning and end of the videos to help support the free content. That really means a lot to us. And that's it again for this time. Thank you for watching. I'm your host, Manu S. I'll see you next time. Bye.